doesn't get a petrol head going, nothing will. So with all the recent issues we've had with the Evil 86, we decided we'd bring it up to the experts at the 86 shop. on the hoist and today we're going to do a couple of things. I've replaced the O2 sensor in there which we found when we were at the dyno to be frayed. Just draining the water out now. We're going to put a new thermostat in the back and then we're going to move over to the back of the car and put our upgraded drive shafts in. So let's get started. Well Andrew's given up on waiting for me to do it so he's taken over now. Hi I'm Andrew from the 86 shop. We're here to see if we can help Dylan make his race car faster. And he's just taking out the standard thermostat over there and we've got a brand new colder Mishimoto one over there which we'll put in. 88 versus 76 and we just need to change the temperature which the fans come on and then uh, Andrew pointed something out to me apparently our dip is fine I think it's got too much play in the joints at the end of the drive shafts which will get fixed when we put our shafts in today the guys at Diff Lab won't need to be seeing the diff anytime soon we need to take the shafts out we've got upgraded shafts that are specifically made by the 86 shop we're trying to eliminate how many shafts we keep going through we're gonna get Andrew finish up the thermostat over there and then we'll jump on the back Talk us through the new shafts, mate. That's the factory end. This comes on all 86s. It goes in with the differential. Has a CV style joint on it, a spider gear, a cage, eight ball bearings. This is good for a road car with high horsepower or with semi slicks on the racetrack where there's a lot of load. That cracks the cage through here and then that becomes a failure. So what we've done is we cut the shaft off here, as you can see where this weld is, and weld this piece onto a completely different style joint altogether that doesn't have that style of setup in it at all. It will not break. That's good news, we need that. He actually came to our rescue when we were doing the endurance, the first endurance race last year, and we managed to do exactly that, break one of the CVs. So the outers are still exactly the same? Correct. Standard ones, yeah. and they were fine. So it's just the inners that keep breaking the cage. Well, the first place that cops the shock load from the drivetrain is from the differential to that joint. So then you've got a little bit of play within the joint, then you've got flex along the shaft before you get to this joint. So they don't seem to break this joint. At the moment, this seems to be a good cost-effective fix. So Sorry, I have to do funny camera angles. I'm short, he's taller. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot chunkier as well. Yeah, it is. Well, let's get it in. So in order to remove the shafts from the 86, it's obviously the wheel off. Uh, suspension arm off as well take off the major nut that sits over there and then you can actually move the whole suspension arm up and slide the shaft out so it's actually quite easy to do we'll get that all off there now and put the new shafts in Six shop been running for me. About two, two and a half to three years. We started out doing time attack stuff with a lot of STIs and WRXs for a lot of years. Very successful. 
I came from rear wheel drive cars and then when these cars were first came out I drove one and thought how awesome they were so I started the 86 shop. And the advantage is they run the Subaru flat four motor, they run a lot of Subaru parts as well so he's very familiar with most of the basics of the cars already. A couple of things you had to learn about the 86 though through the years. Most of it's pretty good really, they're an awesome little car. It just essentially it's a Subaru. And there's a lot of Subaru Impreza in these cars. Like the whole rear end setup's almost identical to what the current Impreza is. And obviously the boxer engines are still a boxer engine. My opinion is better than the TJ. I never thought <laughs> I'd hear anyone say that, especially a Subaru man. Why is it that you think the FA is better than the EJ, mate? The EJ is 30 years old. FA is latest technology. Speed. What about the guys that always say that the newer technology stuff is just not as strong as the old stuff? Uh, I think in this case the newer stuff is stronger than the old stuff. Engineered a lot of the problems out of the EJ so the FA doesn't have a lot of the same issues. EJ was never that strong to begin with. Without going closed deck and a lot of stuff that they're doing now to try and make them so they're more robust. And as you can see we haven't got much restrictions around the diff so having a bigger casing over there is actually not a bad thing at all. This is another tool of yours, is it? Especially calibrated too. Any screen both ways? No. One job, eh? <laughs> Are you happy now? It's your car. <laughs> this will be another little trick that you're going to tell us about now. Because it's a rubber bush, once we tighten it, it then relies on tension on the bush to make it operate. So you've got to tighten it at ride height. Otherwise it puts too much tension on the bush all the time. Yeah, I've never done that. That's why he's the mechanic. I just drive. <laughs> Oops. We've got some awesome freaking 280Z and a 240Z sitting in the background over there. Some special cars. This is his own shop car. At the moment getting a few things done to it. It's on standard suspension at the moment. So I'd imagine that they're doing something with suspension. He's always trying out something new and developing something new. It's got a turbo kit on this particular motor. He's done an awesome job of ducting all the uh, air into the radiators and intercoolers and oil coolers as well. The car's got diff coolers, it's got a gearbox cooler, fully street registered, big APR wing. We need to put one of these on our race car as well. The STI brake conversions, Oracle Motorsport. So he is a specialist in the 86s, but he specializes more in motorsport. And that's why we've got the 86 over here, because not only does he know his way around the 86, he's very knowledgeable when it comes to motorsport, specifically CAMS motorsport. There's the race car sitting outside the front there, which is the Camel, participates in the production touring car series. Um, this car's a time attack car. Ours is a mix of a few things, a couple of turbo 86s and stuff that have come out of the 86 shop. So you specialize in motorsport. What is your motorsport background? I've been involved in racing in just about every form there is for my whole life. I've mainly been a mechanic, but in recent years I've started to drive as well, and I've sort of enjoyed it from both sides now. And you've got one of the quickest 86 uh, times around QR, around Morgan Park and Lakeside yet? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. I'm not saying I'm the world's best driver, but the car's pretty good. What's your biggest achievement in motorsport? I'm being a head mechanic on a car that won a race round at Simmons Plains in Tasmania and had supercars. Holden or Ford? A Holden man, but only ever worked on Ford race cars. But that's why I like 86s, because they're rear wheel drive. And affordable, and reliable. And fast. Well, in boost form they're fast, but in an A form they're fast as well, just not in a straight line. Yeah. So the 86 through the corners, there's not much that can keep up with it, and we've proved it time and time again. There's just not much that can take a corner as fast as what an 86 can. The weight distribution and balance of the car is exceptional. You'll see the engine is actually still sitting behind the front of the front wheel. So in terms of balance, the FA20 is perfect for it. And the FA20 is not exactly pushed far back because as you can see, we can get into the gearbox bolts over here. I love seeing no resistance in the drive line like that, mate. Mm. Yeah, and in fact, we've got both wheels turning and the car's in neutral. So the fact that it's doing that means there's just no resistance in the drive line at all. So we definitely need to start doing some diagnosing into the motor and find out what it is that's causing our 30 kilowatt power loss. Man, in um, February, the uh, car had pockets of air. Well, not pockets of air, pockets of hot water were working its way through the system. Every time it sit in the pits, it would get super hot, and then that pocket of water would make its way through the system on the track until it eventually evened out. Ever seen that happen before? Did I mention about how you got this hot at QR? Yeah. What? Is it gone? You may have heard it. That yeah. might be where your missing kilowatts are. 
that's the problem with um, engines that have MLS slash multi shim steel head gasket. You can hurt the cylinder head or hurt the head gasket, but they just it's such a tiny little leak and it can take a long time for it to really start to show itself. But it'll just slowly get worse and worse over time. Nothing big, but just bubble, bubble, bubble. But if you get a tiny little bit of water going into the cylinder, yeah. they can be taking power off it. It stop, doesn't stop bubbling. Or we may be just only having a little bit of exhaust gas coming back this direction, which means you're down on compression slightly. Well, if you give a bit of a rev, you see that you have got a problem. Dude. Yeah. The fact that we know the car dropped the hose on the track, and even though you said you watched the gauge and you brought it in, it doesn't matter. That's the supply hose that come off. That's bad. You're down on power. You've got 30 kilowatts missing for no apparent reason. We got a radiator that just won't stop blowing bubbles. Wow. Wow. It's like boiling the kettle after you finish. All right. I'm gonna call it. I'll say. Head gasket. Nice size. Great. Go motor racing though, said it'd be fun. They definitely didn't say it'd be cheap. Won't cost you any money either. <laughs> When's your next event? Sunday. What do you reckon? New motor or new head gasket? It's not cost effective to do the head gaskets. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Unless you're going to do it yourself. It's, it's like three days work. Machine the heads, gasket set, labour, everything. It's going to be five grand. You can buy an engine for three. Yeah. Another broken car. I think we found your 30 kilowatts. They're down there. There's one kilowatt. <laughs> two kilowatt. There's a half a kilowatt. No, no, it's not giving me any more kilowatts. Oh, it's fixed itself. Yeah, there we go. Oh, sand it. Did you put some, some gasket welds in yep. there or something? Yeah. yeah, well, that's right. We just put some bar stop leak in it. Oh, well, we'll just look for a new motor. Yeah, it's a big That sucks. Get it in the trailer. Drive it on Sunday. we got to get it ready for Enduro in April. we got to get something sorted out. We'll see you at the track with an injured car.